uh, when we look at this age group, these are consumers. And I think, as you've indicated, we live in a consumer culture and mm -hmm. that everybody would like to have a Buick and et cetera. But yet and still, uh, it seems that opportunities are denied. Many young sure. people, when the, uh, what impact does that have as well, a psychologist well, uh, upon? Well, see, the economic, you know, you know, culture of America, the whole economy is shifting in general. I think this movie that Michael Douglas recently starred in called Falling Down, I went to see it. It wasn't a terribly good movie, but I mean, Newsweek did a cover a couple weeks later saying something like uh, white male paranoia. I think that there's a perception among many people in white America, probably best reflected in people like Rush Limbaugh, that blacks, you know, are getting too much. I think because we see Michael Jordan saying, you know, you better eat your Wheaties and Eddie Murphy making a million dollars and Michael Jackson running around in fantasy land that black males are okay. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is that the American economy is shifting and usually when economies begin to shrink, somebody gets scapegoated. I think in this culture, we're seeing the scapegoating of blacks in this culture. Uh, you, know, you know, when we hold up canards such as affirmative action, mm -hmm. uh, women are being uh, scapegoated a great deal right now. This, this book called uh, um, Backlash by uh, Susan Faludi talks about how women are being blamed for some of the ills of our society from a you know, variety of the, you know, the disintegration of the family. So I think that uh, the society is shifting in general. And I think we're at a very dangerous point in our society mm -hmm. right now when we don't really look at uh, rea the realities of the economic situation, how we are part of a global economy. Mm -hmm. Well, now, I think uh, President Clinton at uh, present is uh, discussing some prospects of introducing uh, summer jobs and et cetera. And uh, what do you think that that would do, and uh, what impact do you think uh, that would have upon uh, some of the problems that we are faced with? Well, I'm not going to minimize it, but I think it's a Band-Aid solution and a bleeding ulcer. You know, I think that it helps. Mm -hmm. I would never, I mean, if somebody said, would you rather have a summer jobs program, would you not? Of course I would mm -hmm. take it. But I think that, you know, after the summer is over, we need some fall jo jobs programs mm -hmm. as well. And we don't need, we need a better educational system Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for young blacks in this culture as well as with, you know, Hispanic young people. I think that we have to create systems that mm -hmm. affirm the identity of what black males are all about as well as black children in mm -hmm. general rather than to deny it or just tr mm -hmm. try to tear it down. And I think that all of those things go into the mix. Mm -hmm. You know, I was told as many, I'm always amazed when I get in groups of black professionals when I asked the question, well, how many of you were told that you weren't going to be successful? Nearly all of those black mm -hmm. professionals, doctors, lawyers, mm -hmm. teachers, will raise their hand. I was told when I was in the 10th grade that I should not go to college. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we see all of these things. I think we have to have a system that, you know, gives more positive mm -hmm. feedback to our young people. Now, I think you mentioned uh, the system of education, and, and we've not had an opportunity to uh, <coughs> talk about dropouts because uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, in trying to achieve uh, many people look at higher education as the ultimate achievement in terms of education. But too many of these young people don't have an opportunity to uh, make it to higher education, and that's uh, because of the dropout problem. Sure. Now, what sure. impact uh, is uh, uh, dropout, has dropout on uh, this group? Of well, actually, I mean, let's look at, again, some numbers. If you look at SAT scores among urban blacks, they have actually increased um, over the past 10 years. For uh, whites, it has actually stayed st stable, in some cases actually gone down. That's good news. I think also, you know, what is good news is that the dropout rate seemingly in urban areas in the United States mm -hmm. are beginning to decrease. It has always kind of stayed the same in rural areas, and I mm -hmm. think it's for work problems, you know, work-related issues and mm -hmm. so forth. So I think there's good and bad news. I think the issue is that when these black males, black young people get out of prison, I mean, get out of uh, that's a Freudian slip, get out of high school. Mm -hmm. they, they need jobs to go to. Mm -hmm. Detroit, for example, has a 64% unemployment rate among black teenagers. I think those are the things that are needed. We, don't, we need jobs training program, but we need jobs for these kids to be able to go to when they get out of school. And I, that's the thing that's mm -hmm. needed. We've got about five minutes, uh, sure. uh, Dr. Winbush, before we uh, end this program for today. Uh, uh, are there some other areas that perhaps you would like to speak to dealing with this as an issue or mm -hmm. perhaps to uh, reemphasize some of the things that we've already talked about? Well, I think that one thing that all of us should do, you know, I mean, at an intellectual or purely academic level, I think we should read more about the state of black America and particularly the, the history of black 
uh, people. I'm again amazed at how much we don't know. We, we think we know a lot, but how much we don't know about the history of African American men in this country. Uh, and, it's, and it's more than just who invented what and who was the first to get to the North Pole or South Pole or whatever, but those other things that are very, very critical to understanding how we got to the state that we're in. I also think that we need to stop listening to some you know, popular pundits who seem to perpetuate stereotypes that may not be true. For example, we mentioned the issue mm -hmm. about uh, drugs in this country. Mm -hmm. um, if I were to target a drug treatment program right now, I would probably get suburban housewives um, who are on alcoholism, who are, you know, who are making a lot of money, or their husbands are in many cases. I think those are some of the most at-risk people in our culture. Surely black males are at risk, but I think that we have to take, we don't want to you know, perpetuate the stereotype that these are the most dangerous people in our culture. These are the people who are going to, uh, kill you in a dark alley at night. There's other peoples who are probably even more dangerous mm -hmm. than that in mm -hmm. our society. Very good. And, and of course, uh, Dr. Winbush, uh, looking at all of these issues uh, uh, and uh, looking at some of the proposed solutions, uh, what do you think uh, our national leaders are? Do you, uh, can you identify any persons who might be uh, 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 identified as national leaders? What, what, what ought their responsibility to be well, to bring this to the attention of people nationwide. Yeah. Well, I always resist talking about who, you know, national black leaders are. I mean, probably on those lists would be people like Jesse Jackson, you know, whomever. I think the leadership takes place. You know, I always tell young black people, you got to look in the mirror for who your leader is. And I really believe that, too. I think that the, I think enough has been said, you know, we started, maybe we've come full circle. Mm -hmm. I think that we know what the problems are right now mm -hmm. among black, you know, males in this society. I would probably say that the three things that if I could tell people, which I have, it would be education, education, education. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more important than uh, education. Not, not as far as I'm concerned, uh -huh, no. Uh -huh. and, 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 and of course, uh, uh, as the uh, director of the Vanderbilt uh, Black Johnson Cultural Center, uh, uh, you are doing everything that you can within where you are to uh, try to make sure that people have a better understanding of this issue as uh, as we have here today. I, I try to educate myself as well as people who come there, you know, about the issues relative to African American culture mm -hmm. and life. And, 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 and what is, uh, when, you, when you look at uh, uh, the education institutions, and I don't, not necessarily Vanderbilt, mm -hmm. uh, any particular educational institution, but what ought educational institutions do in order to try to, over the last couple of minutes that we have, in well, order to try to at least uh, deal with this as an issue, if it is educate, educate, educate? Well, the whole purpose of education in American society is to, you know, perpetuate, quote, good citizenship. Unfortunately, we've only seen educational systems that do that primarily for white Americans. I mean, the curriculum of most, curricula of most schools in our country are like self-esteem curricula for whites. I think that we need to have more self-esteem curricula for African Americans as well. Um, there's a congratulatory way that history is presented in this culture. It's saying that everything that was good is white, everything that is bad is of color. And I don't think that's true. And I think that I have seen young black people, when you start teaching them about who really came over here with Christopher Columbus, what actually occurred, some of the works of Denmark Vesey and uh, some of the people I'm sure that you know about, that their eyes brighten up. They want to hear more. And I think that that insatiable history that all children have needs to be taught more to young people in uh, our public school system. Very good. And Dr. Winbush, let me thank you, uh, for the audience, uh, for coming by and giving us that very, very important information today. And let me encourage you to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.